we now know who the Bassmaster Elite rookies will be for 2025. But where do they stand and what are some of their accomplishments? That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family, and let me say thank you. It's overwhelming all the support you all do and give me. I appreciate all the comments. I appreciate all the uh, subscribers. I appreciate all the members. I really do appreciate it. So thank you. It's humbling and it's awesome. I love responding to the comments and hearing your side and hearing, uh, having the back and forth debate on where some of these topics are. So keep commenting, but if you're not a subscriber, you should be, because there's like 75% of the people who watch these videos aren't subscribers, and you should be. It's, it's quick, easy, and free. Click the button, and welcome to the team. I just did a video yesterday after we got to see who the qualifying anglers were from the Opens that were qualifying for the Elites in 2025. And when you start diving into some of these anglers, you'll realize that these nine anglers are exceptional. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people that say, oh, well, they're scopers. You're right. There's, there's no debating it. If you're not scoping, you're not winning. That's what it comes down to right now. You might not like it. I don't like it. But it is how the tournament series is, especially the elites. But these nine anglers that just moved in from the Opens into the Elites are phenomenal. And I've said it many times, I think that going through the Opens is some of the toughest competition you'll face. I actually think that there's times when I think that it's harder to go through the Opens than fish a full season on the Elites. And I mean no shade at all to any Elites. But I think that 50 or 60% of the Elite Anglers if they got dropped back down to the opens, wouldn't qualify to go back up. And those anglers that are relegated back to the opens and have to try to requalify for the elites, it doesn't happen that much. That's the truth. You have to be a phenomenal angler. And the young youth anglers that are really on top of scoping and know how to fish everywhere are so well balanced as anglers that I just don't think those elite anglers that go back down would make it back up. And I know 2023 rookies all made, or nine of them made the classic qualifier. Honestly, they were exceptional. These nine guys you are going to see or hear that they're really exceptional. So I'm going to have to read a lot of notes. But if you don't know who Easton Fothergill is, he is the real deal, in my opinion. He's from Minnesota. He is the defending college bracket champion. He is part of the Montevello, I hope I said that wrong, team of the year. He had brain surgery or had a problem and still came out and qualified. He won two times in the Open. He won two events out of nine this year. Think about that. That's exceptional. Where you have a field of 225 plus anglers. He won twice. He's the Open Angler of the Year two-time classic qualifier and he actually made $95,000 for winning angler of the year. He is determined, he is humble, and he's ready. Now when you look at him going into the elites for 2025, one of the things you have to acknowledge is right off the bat he's great at fishing down here in Florida. Now he'll be able to fish everywhere because he's a smallmouth Minnesota angler so he's gonna do well up north. But Sometimes when you come from up north and come down south, you just don't like our bathtub way of fishing. Easton is really good down here in Florida. And with two tournaments down here in Florida to start off the season, look for him to start off on a really good note. Next, we have Cody Meyer from Idaho. He's a former MLF angler, consistent when he was on the FLW for over nine years. He's won over $1.5 million. He has one career win. 33 top 10s in his thing in his career 15 years as a professional angler he's qualified for the red crest twice and in 2023 he finished the red crest in the top 10 while he was fishing the bpt he's established and knows the ins and outs and the ups and downs of being a professional angler cody is the real deal too Cody is established and is consistent, and you're going to see his name up there right away. I really like Cody. 15 years. He knows, he knows what it takes to be a pro week in and week out. 
And that's some of the learning curves that most anglers don't get. He qualified first year trying to get on the leaps and in the opens, he qualified. That's saying something. There's a lot of pros that are tr trying to requalify and don't get up there. And he's a pro too, but I mean former pros of the leaps. Cody Meyer is awesome, an awesome angler, and you're going to hear from him real soon. Third is Tucker Smith. Also fishes really well down here in Florida. But Tucker is a three-time high school champion. He is the college national champion. He is the Bassmaster All-American. He is on the college team of the year. This was his first full season on the, on the Opens, and he qualified. That's saying something. He cashed in eight of nine tournaments on the Opens in 2024. He was one of those anglers that won a million dollars with Logan Parks while he was fishing at, in Auburn on the U.S. Open National Bass Fishing Amateur Team Championship in 2021. He has all it takes. You can't say more for what this young man has done. He knows how to win. He's a winner. He's going to do great on the elites. He's good in Florida. And starting off in Florida and getting that confidence in the, his first year as an elite angler will only help propel him down the line as he fishes the Elite Series in 2025. This is another guy that I just don't think, I think you gotta put your money behind him. He is that good. Next is Paul Marks. He's from Georgia. He fished FLW and Major League Fishing for a few years. He has three career wins with FLW and Major League Fishing. He has 15 top tens. He has $284,000 in career earnings on the MLF FLW side of fishing. He won a high school event in 2029. He's a four-time BFL winner. First full year as an open angler in 2024 and cashed seven out of nine events in 2024 in the opens. I'm telling you guys, we might think there's a couple big, bigger name guys in here, but I mean, you look at those four guys right off the bat. They're outstanding anglers and it only gets better. Emil Wagner's next. He's from Georgia, first year in the Opens and qualified for the Leeds. He cashed eight out of nine events. He is the BFL All-American winner for $120,000. He went to Ole Miss and graduated in 2021. He was able to qualify for the Red Crest in 2024 and finished in 11th. He has $307,000 in winnings on the Major League Fishing side. He has 20 top 10s with two wins, both on the BFLs. And I can promise you, right now, He's already in contention for Hartwell in 2025 on the leads. He's great at Hartwell. I mean, if you're a fantasy fishing person, this is someone you got to have on your, your roster. I'm going to tell you right now. This is what he's done. He's had a third, a first, a tenth, and a second. He's also fantastic on Lake Lanier where he fished the BFL too. He's good in Florida. Emil is an angler that has all of the things to be Fantastic and great on the Elite Series. Emil is the real deal, too. Keep your eye on this angler. Next is Andrew Loberg. He's in Alabama, currently living in Alabama, but was from California years ago. He's the College Fishing Conference champ, two-time Toyota champ in 2021. He finished second place in the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit on the Harris Chain. He's won $164,000 over there on MLF. And again, another first year open qualifier fishing the whole series and qualified for 2025 Elite Series. Another guy. This is another angler of these six guys. There's nothing at all wrong with any of these guys. Their credentials show that they are ready to go take that next step and be part of the youth anglers that are succeeding right now. Seventh is someone I wish I knew, Dakota Eber. He's from Texas, former Major League Fishing angler. Fifth in MLF BPT in Angler of the Year points in 2023. Fourth in 2022. Bass Pro Tour. Not any of the lower invitationals. This is the highest league for Major League Fishing. Fifth and fourth. Unbelievable. 28 top tens. $1.1 million in earnings. He is going to be awesome when the elites go down to Texas in 2025. Put him down right now. He's going to do well. He has two Red Crest appearances. First official season in the Opens, and he cashed seven out of nine times, and he's ready to go in the mix for that Angler of the Year in the Leets for 2025. 
He's going to be great. He is a fantastic angler. There's nothing that this young man can't do. He can fish everywhere, any place, any time, any style you want. Dakota Ebert is fantastic. Next is Bo Browning, Arkansas, from Arkansas. He's the he's a former high school angler. Dad is Stephen Browning, so he has the heritage already. He's an Abu Garcia college champ in 2021. Has fished some of the opens early in his career, and his but this was his first official full season on the opens, and he qualified. There's a a common occurrence here. There's some guys that take years and years and years to requalify. These eight anglers right now have all qualified in their first year on the Opens to get to the leads. They're better than we think, honestly. They are much better than we think. He only cashed four out of nine events, but he was unbelievably consistent all year. His worst tournament in the Opens this year was 76, and he had a crazy strong finish. Bo has the heritage and has the knowledge and has all the things it takes to be an elite angler. He's going to be great. He's great in Florida. He's great in Florida. And I think that having dad help you as much as he can shows or will show that Bo is the real deal too. Last but not least is Evan Kung. He's from Canada. He is actually the first Canadian to qualify via the Opens. He has fished one Toyota Series event and he won it in 2023 on Table Rock. <laughs> He's one and done. He is one and done. He this is his second season as an open angler. He cashed in all he cashed in six out of nine events here in 2024. But I'd love to know how he didn't have a good 2023. I'd love to know if maybe four facing sonar or the schedule or whatever it was helped him succeed in 2024 compared to 2023. I sent him some questions on Instagram. I haven't heard back, but I'm doing this video a couple hours after uh, direct messaging him. But Evan is another guy. He is just, he can do it. We, we're not giving these guys enough credit. When I look at where they're going to do or how they're going to do in 2025, I'm just going to give you some quick stats. So on Okeechobee this year, 2025, or next year for 2025, the Elite Series, Tucker Smith, Easton Fothergill, Bo Browning, Emil Wagner, all were in the top 12 in the Opens. You had Evan Kung at 17, Dakota Eber at 20, uh, 21st, and Cody Meyer at 37th. We go to St. Clair, Paul Marks, 11th, Tucker Smith, 15th, Emil Wagner is 18th, Andrew Long, 26th, Dakota Eber, 38th, and Easton Fothergill finished 46th. On Hartwell, Emil Wagner is going to kill it. He's just going to kill it. But these guys all have been consistent or have done well where the elites are, are going to be next year. And they're only going to get better once they get their feet wet and realize what they need to do and how they need to do it. These are nine anglers that we're going to hear from a lot. I, I honestly believe they all make the classic for 2026. That's what, how I feel. I think these guys are all fantastic anglers. They're scopers, but they're all great at what they do right now. And I think the future is bright for Bassmasters with anglers like this, because these guys are studs. So what do you think? Can they all make the classic? Am I just being crazy? Is my stomach too loud and you're hearing that? I haven't had breakfast since 11 o'clock. But where are these anglers going to finish? What makes them so good for 2025? Are they going to be the best rookie class? Comment below and tell me what you think. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I really appreciate everyone. Thank you. Cheers and tight lines.